All right, you guys, welcome to Midweek Mobility. It is July. July 4th is tomorrow, so happy 4th of July, uh, Independence Day. I, this month, we're talking about the hang position and how to improve your hang time. Um, but what does the hang position actually mean, the hang archetype, um, that Dr. Sarah talks about a lot? Um, well, it actually means full interrotation of your shoulder. And why is that important? Why is rotation important? And what is it? And that's the point of this video today. So rotation of the shoulder is the actual spinning motion. So if you look at my shoulder joint here, when I talk about internal rotation, I'm talking about the spinning motion going down. So this motion going down. When I talk about external rotation, I'm talking about this motion, this motion. Internal rotation is this motion, this motion, all right? So if I test people clinically, I'll say, okay, reach up your back and see how far you can reach up your back with one arm, and then I'll reach up your back with the other arm. And that kind of is a quick way for me to um, actively test internal rotation, all right? The other way is to actually lay physically on your back and take your arm and see how far you can go down without that shoulder popping up, that humerus. So just so you understand, it is a spinning motion, the humerus spinning in on the um, glenoid, basically, of that scapula. Ray here, super coach, it, Ray Rango from Stratfold, is going to be talking about movements affected both in life and in the gym when you don't, when you're missing internal rotation. Cool. So. The Stromhold, we are a CrossFit and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, so we're going to talk, touch on a couple of those things. The first thing in Olympic lifts, which is one of my favorite things, is one thing we'll see in Olympic lifts is when you're in the top of that finished position, a lot of guys that are missing internal rotation will end up with this janky position here at the top. And what we'll see sometimes in the clean is that when they try to turn that all those elbows over, they end up having a bicep curled over and not able to keep the barbell close to the body as Coach Bergner teaches us. Shoulders lead, elbows follow, come in this position. They'll end up coming here and then they'll put the bicep curl like that. We'll also see in the front rack position when they receive the bar that their shoulders would, I don't know, even know if I can do it, but the shoulder would come in and kind of be in this weird position. They can't get this nice elbows up and out position, which is what we want for a stable rack. In the overhead squat, what's strange, strange enough is that if you're missing internal rotation, you're actually going to also miss external. So you have guys overhead squatting like this. So improving that internal rotation of that shoulder will actually help you improve this armpit forward position, which, which is what we want in the overhead squat. Um, kicking pull-ups too. You'll see people when they're doing pull-ups, as they're coming down the front, the front of that kick, their elbows will turn in this way, which is not a good position for that shoulder. Um, so I already talked about the front rack in jiu-jitsu. One of the really basic submissions is the kimura, and all we're doing is we're testing that internal rotation. So, Basically right here, if you do jujitsu, if you have good internal rotation, you won't have to tap this soon because you can actually let that arm go farther down. If you have full range, you get to here before you have to um, submit that movement. So there's a couple of places where the lack of internal rotation is gonna affect your, um, your movement or the, whatever sport you're playing. Awesome, thank you, Ray. And do you mind laying down the ground with it? I'm just gonna show you guys kind of what we teach in Mobility Wad um, is that ways you guys not only reach up your back, but ways to test it, is have a partner put their hand on the top of your shoulder joint and take their hand down. Um, and where I start feeling the shoulder pop up is where I know their end range, end, end range is. So ideally, I want the hand almost to the ground, almost to the deck, right? So Ray has pretty good internal rotation on this left side. I'm gonna take him down, and I feel it about, you know, 70 degrees start to pop up. So he's almost got full range of motion. Can he get all the way down before his shoulder pops up? No, not yet. That's that's how you want to test it. Um, and then what does this look like? This looks like, you know, the second to third pull in a little, in a little lift. When he was talking about the overhead position, if your internal rotators, which include your lat, your pec, your subscap, are tight, do you think they're going to be able to hold your your arm in a full, um, in full range of motion overhead, full external rotation, if the opposite muscles are tight? No, you think you can really activate your glutes when you have the front of your hips are tight? No, it's the same concept here. So what I want, what I would want you guys to do um, is actually mobilize so I put the most in there, thank you. Okay. Uh, and Ray, you know, he's a mobilizing phenom. Um, Post your glide of the shoulder. So there's this is a mobility wad. Take a kettlebell and hold on to it. You can 
drive that shoulder back, lay on the ground. You've got internal rotation, the barbell. So if you're laying on your back, you have know, the barbell, PVC pipe um, is obviously lighter. But you can tap down that shoulder and take your hand down into internal rotation using muscle dynamics. There's also a mash, and just like I said, your pec. So on Ray, pec, pec major, pec minor. You've got your subscap underneath here. Okay, you've got your lat, which is a huge sheath down, down to your pelvis. So it attaches to your pelvis, comes up, and attaches to the front of your arm. So that's the thing with you guys. If, if you want to mobilize and you feel like you're missing, you know, one, that hang position, you know, that hang archetype, then definitely go to these mobilizations. But also think about, after you mobilize, how are you going to fix that movement piece? And that's when we come down to this exercise of, all right, that second and third pull, driving those shoulders, like, like uh, Ray said, driving those shoulders high and outside is a big problem that people have. They fight themselves, they end up pushing their shoulders forward. So how are you going to train that? By just using the barbell. Doing the vertical work is one way, but then there's nothing like just practicing in a warm up too, without a barbell, actually practicing driving that shoulder back up and back. It's a form of proprioceptive neural facilitation. So you take your hand in a, in a relatively lighter band, put that leg, you know, the same leg back, and you're gonna let, you know, keep your arm externally rotated and drive that shoulder up and back behind your ear. So I'm building awareness with that drive. So that second to third pull, shoulders are elbows high and outside, shoulders high and outside, I'm driving behind my ear. Okay? So you guys can do that, you know, give it roughly 10 reps. Four to five sets, just it's nothing, it's not supposed to fatigue you, it's more to build, um, again, kinesthetic awareness. Now, the things that could go wrong, so here's the thing, like you're going to notice in your lips, like, oh yeah, I, uh, I feel like, you know, my shoulders are forward, I feel like I'm fighting myself in the middle of the lips, wow, I'm getting a little bicep, you know, front of the shoulder pain. Well, those things, you know, consider those warnings for you, right? Bicep tendon, posterior cuff tightness, um, anterior to posterior instability can come out when you don't have a good hang position and you're pushing yourself to the limit of the gym. So you don't think you can get away with not having it because it does over time, it will affect you. It'll put stresses on tissues that don't need that stress. Um, and here's the other thing, you guys, the postures that you hold during the day at work, like forward head posture, what do you think happens to your shoulders when you have that forward head posture? Your shoulders want to round forward. Um, it is, you know, we can talk about sitting posture all the time and standing, but it does matter. So those tissues attached to your neck also attach to the top of your shoulder. So you want to be aware of your posture and sitting during the day. Do those chin tucks backwards to help build better awareness in your spine and your neck, because your neck will affect your shoulder. Um, and also another moment you can do for good, you know, shoulder overhead as well as hanging as the first row. So with that, you guys, have a good day. Next video is we're going to talk about um, a little bit of World Cup action and internal rotation and why that matters. Have a good day.